Hello friends, I want to share with you when it's time to make changes, which is something that we all have to face at one time or another, it is important for us to take into consideration some recommendations that I wanted to share with you on this special occasion. I know it's not easy to make changes and sometimes those changes come unexpectedly, sometimes those changes are um, something that we cannot avoid, but regardless, we all have a tendency to get comfortable where we're at and it's what we call the comfort zone. So regardless of why the change has to happen, we will try to fight it and resist it with all our strength. But the most important is to identify why we are having or we are being forced to make these changes. I wanted to share with you some important keys, what I call the key questions that I have come to ask myself when I have to face any type of change in my life. This has helped me a lot. Now, one thing that I want to recommend is that you take a piece of paper or a notebook, and as I always share with you, this has been very helpful for me in my own professional growth experience because it allows me to see it. It's one thing when I think about it, but when I write it down, when I get to go back and read it and see the whole picture, it just opens my perspective and it gives me a total different view of the whole situation. So I really think getting a piece of paper or a notebook and writing down these key questions that I brought to share with you are going to be very helpful for you as well. The first key question is what? What is going on? What's the current situation? What is it that it's happening? Right now, we're not talking about what I need to do. I'm just talking about what's going on. Because I have realized that sometimes we, we struggle so much and we feel so bad inside. And feeling upset is just a reflection of how we are trying to avoid to name what's going on, to accept what's going on. I have found myself sleepless at night. I have found myself not being able to eat. I have found myself struggling so much with my emotions. And the truth is that all those sleepless nights and days without eating and struggling has to do with the fact that I don't want to put a name to it. I don't want to label it. I don't want to admit this is what's going on. And it is extremely important that we identify the situation. Let's imagine that you are on the other side of the street and you're going to tell the situation to someone else. How will you narrate it? How will you tell the story? What's going on? So that's the first key question. What? What is happening? What's happening in your life? What's going on? What's the current situation? The way it is right now. Now, the second key question is why? Why is this happening? Sometimes we get stuck and we don't want to move forward because we're trying to find a reason why things are the way they are. And we struggle and struggle and struggle and we try to look at from different angles, trying to find something that's going to make us feel better about what's going on. So getting to know why this is happening, it's going to bring some sense of peace to the fact that you couldn't um, stop it from happening, that you couldn't change it, that you cannot make it any different than what it is now. So why is this happening? Is this happening because I brought myself to this point in my life? Is this happening because someone else made a choice or made a decision and it puts us in this situation? Um, is it happening because of my job or because of my family? Why is this happening? You need to know and you need to identify the reasons why this is happening so it brings some sense of peace. Now, the third key question, and this is really important, which are my choices? We all have choices all the time. It's, it's funny how we hear people sometimes say, oh, I didn't have a choice. Yes, you do. We always have choices. And this is the moment that you have to face those choices. What are my choices? Which are my choices? What are my pros and cons? What will happen if I make a change? And what will happen if I don't do anything at all? If I don't make any change, if I don't put actions together, if I don't make any decision, because sometimes we don't want to make the decision, but then we are making the decision of not making the decision, if you know what I mean. When we let others decide for us, that's a decision you made. So we always have choices, even when we want to excuse ourselves by saying that we didn't have a choice. Now, it is important, my pros and cons, okay? The pros 
are why it will be good to make any change. The cons are why it won't be good for me to make any change. Once we have these two columns, when we, once we have these two um, list of the good things that will happen if I make any change and the, and, and the things that are not going to be so good for me if I don't make any change, we need to be able to see it because then you'll have a clear mind to know what's best for you because that's what changes are all about. They're pushing us out of where we're at, out of that comfort zone, out of that situation, out of a relationship, out of a job, but it always has to do with moving us forward to a different level. So I wanted to share some recommendations with you and the best way that I thought was possible to do it was bringing some specific situations and maybe you can relate to one of them. I brought the three most common ones that I think we all at some point or another can relate to them and specific recommendations that again if you want just uh, take a piece of paper, write them down because this might be very helpful for you. The first situation, the first scenario that sometimes we have to face um, right before a change has to do with holding on to the past when we're clinging so hard to uh, a relationship that is already um, a, that has already ended maybe a friendship maybe um, a love relationship maybe it's a consequence of a choice that we made maybe a consequence of a decision and we're still holding on to that result or maybe it's an ideal, maybe it's a dream that we used to have for a long time and we don't want to give up. But these are all things that belong to the past. This is not part of where we are at now. And we somehow are reluctant to enjoy our day to day, to enjoy the point in our lives that we're at now because we're holding on to these different things from the past. What will be the recommendation? One important exercise that we need to probably do every day is to keep ourselves on the here and the now. This is the only moment that we have right now. Whatever happened, happened. We cannot change that. And whatever is going to happen, we don't even know if it's going to happen at all. It's not here yet. So it is important that we continuously remind ourselves that this is the day that we have, that this is the moment to enjoy, that this is the moment to live, that the only thing that we can actually um, experience is the now. I remember in my whole, in, in my entire process, I kept doing that mistake, bringing myself to the past. I kept rolling that movie in my mind as if I could do anything differently. Maybe I had the distortion that if I kept playing it in my mind, something was going to be different. You know what I mean? But the truth is there's nothing we can change from the past. The past, we need to come to peace and make the decision that it's over. Enough is enough. It's over. Whatever happened, happened. And it happened the only way that could have happened. Because that's the only trick thing about my mind. My mind goes, oh, what if? Oh, what if? If I would have done this, if I would have said that. When the truth is that we did things the way we were capable of doing them. There's nothing that we could have done differently because we didn't know. And we didn't have maybe the emotional tools that we needed. So it's over and you have to repeat yourself. It's over. I only have the here and the now and I'm going to enjoy this moment. I'm going to enjoy this day. I'm going to do my best today. And finally, it is time to focus on new what? Goals, new actions, new resolutions, new things. You cannot continue, continue yourself dwelling on the past. It is time to have a new, um, a new perspective ahead of you. So this is the perfect time to focus on new goals, new ideas, new resolutions, new projects, new dreams, new actions, new everything. Okay. Now the second illustration, the second scenario that I wanted to share with you is when we are not happy where we're at, regardless where we're at. Maybe it's at uh, our current job, maybe it's the relationship, maybe it's the place we're living, things are not turning the way we expect them, um, we are insatisfied with the way things are, we are not happy. We're not happy where we're at. Okay, these are the recommendations. Make a list of the things you cannot change. Write them down. Put a name to it, all the different things you cannot change. After you finish with that list, make a list of the things you can change. 
all the ones that you think you can do something about it and you can change. So now you have to list the ones that you can change, the ones that definitely no matter how you feel about them, you don't have the power to change them. And then the second list with all the ones that you can change, something that you can do about them. Once you have the list of the things you can change, make a list of all the actions that you can start putting together in order to change those things that you can change. And, and it's funny because it's so simple, but this simple exercise helps you so much to change your perspective about things. And it will help you focus on what you can change rather than those things that you cannot change. So once you have the list of actions that you need to put in place in order to make those changes, write down your limitations, your fears, what you think can prevent you from making those changes. And once you have those specifics lay out that you're seeing them, then you can write down how you can improve those limitations, maybe gain some more skills, uh, how you can dissipate your fears, how you can prevent these things from not happening. That will give you such a sense of empowerment and you're going to feel so much into doing something about it. One of the things that make us feel so unhappy about the whole situation when things are not the way we want is, as I told you before, thinking that we don't have a choice. When we're putting actions together, when we're doing these exercises that help us look at the whole, uh, uh, at the whole thing, at the whole picture, we get so empowered and we feel so much better about the whole thing because we feel we have a choice. We feel we're doing something. And that's what life is about. We need to continuously move and put our actions together so we don't feel stuck, so we don't feel that our power has been taken from us. The last scenario that I wanted to share with you is when we have to cope with someone invalidating us, uh, maybe they're not recognizing our, our accomplishments, maybe they're not acknowledging our feelings, maybe they're not validating who we are or how we feel or the things that we do, and somehow we are expecting this validation to come from these people. In other words, you all know that sometimes we have toxic people around us, and unfortunately in the world that we live nowadays, there are people that are so miserable inside and somehow they take all that misery out. So those are the toxic people that are always trying to tell us what to do, what not to do, how we did it wrong and how we could do better. So we never feel fully accepted by these kind of people. So what would be my recommendation? The first thing is that you need to find activities and things that you can enjoy. I usually recommend that this is something that you do by yourself. Make a list of activities and things that can help you nurture your self-esteem, that can help you feel better about yourself. This is extremely important because one of the things, one of our mistakes is that we are trying to feel better about ourselves or feel good about ourselves if someone else give us that validation, if someone else is there to make us feel good. And we are entirely responsible to be um, to, to, about the, the way that we feel ourselves. So it's your responsibility to nurture yourself and nurture your self-esteem. So instead of expecting someone else to validate you, it is your turn to make a list of the things that you can enjoy by yourself and you can fully feel um, better about yourself. It is extremely important to set boundaries of, with those people. I know we love them. I know sometimes they're good friends. I know sometimes they are family members. But you know what? You need to take care of yourself. You need to protect yourself. And for that, you are responsible. So you need to set clear boundaries so that their toxicity won't affect you. So if you need to hang out with these people, if you need to get together with them, try to do it in small dosage. Try to do it in short periods of time that you can handle. And remember, you have to remind yourself that this has nothing to do with you. The way they are is the way they are. You cannot change them. It's a choice they make, or maybe they need help, but you cannot change them. So it's not about you. Try to keep your mind with positive thoughts. Try to do maybe daily affirmations, maybe healing beliefs, something that can help you and continue nurturing your self-esteem, especially right before you're going to get together with these people. We're not always going to um, be liked by everybody. Not everybody's going to like us, and that's okay. 
but that doesn't mean that that there's something wrong about you and, and this is something that I experienced myself um, years ago and and I was a struggle trying to have this other person to like me and I had to realize that sometimes there will be people that are not going to like you period and that doesn't make them better or worse than you or make you better or worse than them it's just the way it is but you need to fully accept yourself and love yourself and then you're going to be able to enjoy your relationships with the others regardless um, their levels of toxicity or how they feel or don't feel about you it's all about how you feel about yourself my final considerations for you my friends is that we have to make a choice here and the choice is to put our actions together there's um, no way that we can say that we want something and simply sit back and try to wait for it to happen alone we need to make things happen and finally I this is something that I always say Sometimes we want it so bad. Sometimes we know that we need to do it. Sometimes we feel we got to move forward. But somehow, if we don't put the actions together, nothing's going to happen. So in other words, it's not enough to know. It's not enough to want. It's not enough to feel it. You need the action. Action is the key word today for you to make it happen. So regardless of the change, don't be afraid. Just put your actions together. And trust me, you'll be fine. See you next time.